My name is Paul Rusnock. I'm a professor in the Department of Philosophy at the University of Ottawa in Canada. My teaching nowadays always includes a fairly heavy dose of logic, from the informal logic courses we give to all the students in the Faculty of Arts, to introductory and advanced courses in formal or symbolic logic. I also regularly give courses on the history of philosophy. Last year, for example, I gave a graduate seminar on logical construction in Russell and Carnap, and another one on Frege. The year before, I gave a seminar on the theory of knowledge in Kant and Bolzano. My research work has been mostly in the history of philosophy, in particular the history of analytic philosophy and its links with developments in logic and mathematics. You can find links to my publications on my personal website and some more information about my work on Bolzano in an interview I did with Richard Marshall for 316. I have done a lot of work on Bernard Bolzano, a priest from Prague who is perhaps best known today for his work in mathematics, if for nothing else for having his name attached to the bolzano weierstrass theorem. You will also find that his name is mentioned in histories of mathematics for his work on the foundations of infinitesimal analysis and for his pioneering research in set theory. Recognition of Bolzano's philosophical work in the English-speaking world, at least, has come more slowly. But I remain optimistic that Peter Simon's view will someday become mainstream. He called Bolzano the greatest philosopher of the 19th century, bar none, and added that it's nothing less than a scandal that he and his work are regularly omitted from university courses teaching 19th century philosophy. Bolzano was one of the greatest logicians of the modern period, who formulated the first viable definition of semantic consequence, along with a wealth of other things, in his monumental Theory of Science, or Wissenschaftslehre, which was published in 1837, roughly seven years after he actually finished the work. In his own time, Bolzano was best known for his work as a professor of religion at the Charles University in Prague from 1805 to 1819. In this highly visible position, he had become one of the most prominent advocates of social justice and reform in his homeland, Bohemia. He was equally active in pursuit of ecclesiastical reform and wrote of a number of important works on religion in general and on Catholicism in particular. Bolzano was a casualty of the crackdown in the Habsburg lands that followed the Carlsbad decrees. Deemed politically suspect by the Emperor Franz, he was removed from his university chair at the end of 1819 and forbidden to preach, teach, or publish. These bans were relaxed slightly after the emperor's death in 1835. During my doctoral studies at the University of Waterloo, I had the very good fortune to work with Rolf George, the closest thing I can imagine to the platonic ideal of a doctor Vater. Together, we wrote a number of articles and also produced several translations from Bolzano's writings. The first translation we did together was of a short piece by Bolzano on logic called On the Mathematical Method, along with related selections from Bolzano's correspondence with Franz Exner, who was professor of philosophy in Prague in the 1830s and 40s. Afterwards, we translated a selection of Bolzano's writings on ethics, politics, and religion, including his treatise on the best state, and also a number of beautifully composed and philosophically rich sermons. This was light work compared to what came next, when I somehow managed to strong arm Rolf, who was then, by then retired, into working on a joint project to translate all four volumes and 2,000 some pages of Bolzano's Wissenschaftslehre expanding his 1972 translation of about a fourth of the work into a complete edition. I found translation work with Rolf to be very congenial for a number of reasons. First, he was a highly gifted writer, whose first language was German, but who wrote beautifully in English. Working with him, I had little fear of translation errors making it through to the final version, which is not to say that there are none and I could rely on him to edit for style as well as Maxwell Perkins. At the same time, by carefully working through every sentence of a work such as Bolzano's Wissenschaftslehre, I gained as close an acquaintance with the text as was possible for me. 
Finally, translation work by its nature nicely complements the hustle and bustle of teaching and university administration, since one can always fit in a couple of pages a day, even when distracted by many other things. After finishing my doctorate, I spent a couple of years as a postdoc working with Jan Sebestik, another distinguished scholar whom I was extremely fortunate to meet. Jan was then running a translation seminar with the aim of producing a series of French translations from Bolzano's writings. I participated in the meetings while I lived in Paris and contributed to some of these translations. Jan and I also resolved to write a book on Bolzano's life and work, a project that ended up taking us the better part of 20 years to bring to fruition. It was finally published in 2019. Part of this had to do with our personal circumstances and other commitments, but in large part it was due to the challenge involved in trying to take the measure of such a deep, wide-ranging, and prolific thinker. Here's a list of the chapters to give you some idea of the ground we tried to cover. Some of these chapters are much longer than others. The chapter on logic, for instance, runs about 150 pages and probably could have been published as a separate monograph. While we were relatively brief on the topic of Bolzano's mathematics, in part thinking of our intended audience, and in part because we had already written a separate book on that more specialized subject. More recently, in the last couple of years, I wrote a paper on Bolzano's mathematical work on continuity and another one in which I consider his remarks on the notion of grounding proofs in the light of his 1817 proof of the Intermediate Value Theorem. At the present time, my days are mostly devoted to developing materials for online teaching, something I hope will soon come to an end. When I do find time, though, I plan next to complete and publish two textbooks, one on informal logic and the other on formal logic. I will also do some more work on Frege and Bolzano. Finally, I hope to work with a colleague to write a much briefer introduction to Bolzano's philosophy. And, as always, I am prepared for the possibility that new projects will suggest themselves. I'm very grateful for the opportunity to give a brief presentation of myself and my work, and I'd like to thank Ursula Moser and Winfried Löffler for their very kind invitation.